home, so manager Ian McCall's vision of Fortress Tanadice seems to be taking shape nicely. It certainly scared the living daylights out of Kilmarnock. Andy McLaren's cross created a good early opening for Barry Robson. The home fans didn't have to wait long for a goal, mind. Just 11 minutes had elapsed when Robson supplied an ideal cross for Jim McIntyre. The United striker was to have a field day against some less than inspired defending. Kelly really were all over the place in the opening 45, and whatever way United chose to attack brought its reward. They went for the aerial route for goal number two, and this time it was Charlie Miller in the right place at the right time to double the home side's lead. Andy McLaren's head flick setting up Miller's fourth goal of the season. That really seemed to knock the stuffing out of Kilmarnock, and sensing that his prey was particularly vulnerable, Jim McIntyre went in for the kill. His second goal, like his first, was set up by the excellent Barry Robson. And this is a striker bang on form and full of confidence. Now here's a rarity, a tactical double substitution inside the first half hour. Greer and Dargo coming on for McLaughlin and Hay with Killy already three down. The changes didn't make too much difference initially, as United continued their stroll in the Tanadice Park. And when Charlie Miller was invited to go up a gear, he nearly set up McIntyre for his hat-trick. The danger was far from over though, and Barry Robson's left foot almost punished the Killy defence further. And Robson's contribution was far from over. His persistence and willingness to fight helped set up goal number four. Barrett McInnes played in Jim McIntyre and his hat-trick was never in doubt. His three well-taken goals took him to ten for the season and had Kilmarnock facing humiliation. There's not an awful lot you can do when you're 4-0 down before half-time, except press forward and try to salvage some pride. Chris Boyd tried his best, but Paul Gallagher in goal was alert to the danger. At least there was some sign of life from a Killy point of view. Although at times the visitors seemed to lapse back into their slumber and let United play as they pleased. A state of affairs which almost led to a fifth for Charlie Miller as the interval approached. You could sense Jim Jeffries winding himself up for some harsh half-time words. Kelly did reappear with a much greater sense of purpose, but the frustration didn't diminish, and Craig Dargo's effort was disallowed for offside. And boy, did he not like that decision. Not much wrong with Eric Scorer's delivery or Gary McDonald's knockdown. And Dargo was very unfortunate to be penalised. Kilmarnock, to their credit, kept plugging away in search of a goal, and their second half display did probably deserve one. It was Danny Invincible who claimed it, to at least give the visiting fans a reason to smile with just under half an hour left. Chris Boyd's assist set up Invincible's fourth strike in his last three games. And that was pretty much that. The game petered out fairly quietly, Except, of course, for a well-deserved ovation for the home hat-trick hero. We started the game very well. Uh, it was... I don't think I've ever been in charge of a team that's played that badly. In fact, uh, didn't they turn up the first half? First 20 minutes, in fact, the first couple of minutes, we lost simple headers, balls played in the box. And uh, from there, we never really recovered. I think they scored, what, four goals in 20 minutes spell. Uh, they hit us with everything. Uh, we didn't. Uh, we, we we just kept capitulated with the thing, and uh, you know we gave them a, a right going over at half time. Um, and the second half, it was all about trying to make sure that we didn't have the same sort of performance. But we're coming at half time, and I said what the second half proved to me was that you cheated us at first at uh, the first half.